Dr. Zakia, once again, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think it would be fitting if you begin, Dr. Zakia, by explaining the term once again for our viewers, for the benefit of the viewers and myself. Uh, what does Laylatul Qadr exactly mean and what does it signify for the Muslims? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmeen. Amma abad. Awuzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shali sadri. Wa yisilli amri. Wahlul ujjat min lisaan yafqah qawli. The meaning of the word Laylatul Qadr. Layl means night. Qadr means decree or power, or high esteem, or majesty. So Laylatul Qadr means night of power, or night of decree, or night of majesty, or night of high esteem. And as far as the virtues of Laylatul Qadr is concerned, it is one of the best nights in the month of Ramadan. Rather, it is the best night in the full year. And this was the night in which the Quran was revealed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Qadr, chapter number 97, verse number 1 to 5. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khairum min alfi shahr. Tanazzalu malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi izni rabbim min kulli amr. Salamun ya hatta matril fajr. Which means that indeed we have revealed this message, that is the Quran in the night of power, in the night of decree. And what will explain to thee what is the night of power? The night of power is better than a thousand months. Therein, the spirit and the angels, they descend with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every errand. Peace, this, until morn. So from this verse of the Quran, we come to know that this night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, the night of decree, is the best night in the full year. And this was the night in which the Quran was revealed. And further says that this night is of power, of majesty, of high esteem, and of dignity. And any good deed that is done in this night is better than what is done in a thousand months. And if you divide thousand months by twelve, it comes to more than 83 years. And that is much more than the average life of a human being. So if you do worship in this one night, it is better than doing worship for your full life. And further it says that this is the night when the angels and the spirit, they descend down with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this night, there is peace till morning. And further it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Dukhan, Chapter number 44, verse number 3 and 4, that we have revealed the message to glorious Quran in this blessed night. And we warn you from the evil. And in it, we ordain what has been decreed. And this night, Laylatul Qadr, Qadr also means measurement. And it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Qamar, chapter number 54, verse number 49, that verily, we have created all things in due proportion and measure. So, Qadr also means somewhat like Taqdeer. It's a night of decree. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the decree, the Taqdeer, what is going to happen in the full year from this Laylatul Qadr to the next Laylatul Qadr. That is the reason our beloved Prophet Muhammad said. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Superiority of Laylatul Qadr, hadith number 2014, that anyone who prays in the night of Qadr with faith and seeking Allah's reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. So these are the virtues of the night of Qadr. Indeed, a wonderful night. And I pray and wish that we can all find that night this year, inshallah, during this blessed month of Ramadan. Dr. Zakir, several ahadiths and historical accounts say that the Qur'an was revealed over a period of 23 years. Is there an apparent contradiction between that and what the Qur'an says, that 
was revealed in one night in Laylatul Qadr. There is no contradiction between the Hadith and the historical records and the Quran because if you read the tafsir of the Quran, that the Quran was revealed in Laylatul Qadr, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed the Quran from Lohim Hafuz, from the preserved tablet to the lower heaven on the night of Qadr, that is, in the night of power, in one night. And then, from that lower heaven, parts of the Quran, few verses at a time, was revealed whenever required in a span of 23 Hijri years, in a span of 23 lunar years, or in a span of 22 and 4 to 5 solemn years. So there's no apparent contradiction. It was revealed in one night, from the tablet preserved to the lower heaven, and from there, as in time required, was revealed in parts and verses and surah-wise in a span of 23 years. Okay, thank you for clearing up that apparent contradiction. Which is and, and similarly, as far as the Qadr is concerned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in his knowledge everything what's going to happen, past, present, future. And from that tablet, he reveals in the night of Qadr to the angels whatever is going to happen in the next year. From this night of Qadr to the next night of Qadr. So the angels come to know everything what is going to happen in the next one year in this night. But in Allah's knowledge, it is there till eternity. Okay. Thank you for clearing up that apparent contradiction, Dr. Zakir. Could you explain which is the night of decree or the night of power? As far as the exact date or day of the night of power, according to Sayyid Bukhari, the commentary of Sayyid Bukhari, Fatul al-Bari, it says that there are more than 40 different versions which the scholars have given regarding the day or the date of the night of power. Some say it's the first night of the month of Ramadan, some say it's the seventh night, some say it's the nineteenth night, and the different versions, but the most authentic according to the Sahih Hadith is that it is one of the odd nights in the last ten nights of the month of Ramadan. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Superiority of the Night of Qadr, Hadith number 2017, Allah's Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that seek for the night of Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights amongst the last 10 days of Ramadan. So this is the most authentic. And further it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the Book of Faith, Hadith number 49, Allah's Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that he once went out to tell the Muslims the exact date of the night of Qadr. Then he saw that two Muslim men, they were fighting amongst themselves. They were quarreling. And he said that so and so and so and so amongst the Muslim men, they were quarreling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the knowledge. That means he forgot it. And the Prophet said, maybe it's better for the Muslims. So seek for the Laylatul Qadr on the seventh or the ninth or the fifth night amongst the last ten nights of Ramadan. So here there's an option given by Allah's Messenger for the Laylatul Qadr. And further it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2364, Ubay bin Qab, him. He said, by Allah, he heard Shoba saying that most probably the night of Qadr is on the 27th night because the Prophet, peace be upon him, he asked us to stand up in prayer in this night. So according to this hadith, most probably it is the 27th night of Ramadan. Further it's mentioned in a Sahih hadith in Tirmidhi that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said that seek for the night of Qadr on the 21st night, 23rd night, 25th night, on the 27th night and the last night in the month of Ramadan. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Atikaf, hadith number 2020, that the beloved Prophet, he used to do Atikaf 
in the last 10 days of Ramadan. And he used to seek for the Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. It's further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 2, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2621, that Prophet said that seek for the night of Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, in the last 10 nights. But if you're weak, and if you cannot do in the early parts of the month of Ramadan, then seek it in the last seven nights of Ramadan. It's further mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Superiority of Laylatul Qadr, hadith number 2015, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that the night of Qadr is during the last seven nights of the month of Ramadan. So from various records we come to know that Laylatul Qadr is most probably in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. That's the reason most of the scholars, including Sheikh Utaymi, Sheikh Ben Baz, most of the scholars have the exact date of Laylatul Qadr, when is the exact day of the night of decree. But it is in the month of Ramadan. And most probably in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And most probably in the odd nights of the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, most probably on the 27th night. But no one can pinpoint the exact date. But surely, inshallah, it's in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, most probably in the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. This is what the most of the scholars say. Well, may we find that night, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters, join us after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic Laylatul Qadr. Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakia, what was the wisdom do you feel that behind the uh, concealment of the exact night of Laylatul Qadr? The reason that one can think of that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed the exact date or day of the night of Laylatul Qadr, the first that we can think of is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to double our effort so that we can pray more, we can worship Him more. That's the main reason. If the exact date was known, then we have only done on that day. Number two, and the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed is because so that he can make out who are the serious believers and the non-serious believers. A serious believer will really see to it that he does not miss the Laylatul Qadr and he will try and worship on last nights of Ramadan. And furthermore, he would even try to seek and stay awake late in the night till early parts of dawn. So differentiate between the serious and the non-serious believer. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this manner conceals many things. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the prayer, the dua, the supplication done on Friday will be accepted. But does not tell the exact time. So a person does more supplication throughout the day of Friday. Further, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3. Hadith number 2736, beloved Prophet said that Allah has 99 names, 100 minus 1. And whoever knows these names, he will enter paradise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet did not mention these exact 99 names so that we mention as many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as possible and try and memorize them and did not reveal which is the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we mention all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not mentioned the names of all the awliyas, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has mentioned many in the Quran and the Hadith, but not all of them. So that we respect all the believers of the past. Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not told us which day will we die. If we had known that, that we are going to die after maybe 50 years, so, we, so let's enjoy life now. Oh, 50 years is left and maybe I'll repent in the last few years. 
we don't know when we are going to die. So we should be prepared that if we die now, our account should be in the positive and try and be prepared for the day of judgment. So we don't know when you're going to die. So person is always doing good deeds, maximum as far as possible. And furthermore, Allah also hasn't revealed when is the hour, when is the day of judgment. As Allah says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 34, that no one knows the hour, when will it come. So that we are prepared to die today, prepared for the day of judgment, so that we should always be following the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given the exact day and date of the Ayatul Qadr. Okay. Well, Doctor, that's very good. I mean, the only thing that I'm a little bit concerned about now is how should the, and many of the viewers will be concerned about is, how exactly should you or a Muslim seek Laylatul Qadr? There are guidelines given in the Hadith how you should seek for Laylatul Qadr. It's mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, Hadith number 1370. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that we used to fast along with the Messenger of Allah. And he never woke up, up for prayer in the night, except on the seven last remaining nights, where we prayed till one third of the night. And on the sixth remaining night, he did not wake us up. And again, on the fifth remaining night, he woke us up, and we prayed till half the night. And when the Prophet was about to go, he asked that, why don't you pray with us the full night till morning? So the Prophet said that anyone who prays till the Imam prays, it is as though he has prayed for the full night. And further, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of superiority of Sikh Nilayatul Qadr, hadith number 2014, that anyone who prays in the night of Laylatul Qadr with sincere faith, and seeking Allah's reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. And it's mentioned in Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3512, the Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet, she asked the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, what if I find Laylatul Qadr, what should I do? So the Prophet replied that you should do dua and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying that, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are most forgiving. And you love forgiveness, therefore forgive me. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2024, that the beloved Prophet Muhammad during the last 10 days of Ramadan, he used to tighten his waist belt. That means to work harder and abstain from relationship with the wife. And he used to stand in prayers in the last 10 nights. And he used to wake up his family. It's further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2644, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, he used to exert himself more and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more, pray more, and do dhikr more in the last 10 nights. So this is the way how a Muslim should seek light al Qadr. Are there any signs of Laylat al Qadr mentioned in the Hadith or the Quran? There are signs mentioned in the authentic Hadith of Laylat al Qadr. But Alhamdulillah, all the signs that are mentioned, they are seen after Laylatul Qadr has passed. So it is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not want us to know exactly, because if we had known, then we have seen the sign and then prayed and done worship. And the other nights we would have just, you know, been a bit relaxed and not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a hadith mentioned in Sayyid Muslim that the following of Laylatul Qadr, the next day, the sun will be without rays and it will appear like a dish until it rises high. It's further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2633, that the day following Laylatul Qadr, the sun will not have rays. It's further mentioned in Sahih Muslim, 
Word number two in the book of fasting, hadith number 2635, that the Prophet said that on the night of Laylatul Qadr, the moon will appear like a plate towards the fag end of the month. And it's mentioned in Sahih Hadith of Tabrani and Ibn Khuzayma that the light of Laylatul Qadr will not be too hot, neither will it be too cold. And it will be a generous night, a night of happiness. And the sun, the next day after Laylatul Qadr, will appear weak and reddish. So these are the signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Sahih Hadith. But all of them there after the Laylatul Qadr comes so that we yet seek for Laylatul Qadr. Appropriate wisdom then in that case. Doctor, could you tell us how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to exert himself in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan? As I mentioned earlier, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Ethica, hadith number 2024. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during the last 10 days, he used to tighten his waist. And he used to pray in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And he used to wake up his family and keep his family awake. And he used to exert himself. From the hadith, we come to know that the first thing the Prophet did what is tighten his waist, that means he used to work hard. And secondly, he used to abstain from my relationship with his wife because he used to be in etikaf in the last 10 nights. And one of the requirements of etikaf is that you cannot associate with your wife. I have mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 87. Further, he used to stand up most of the nights or throughout the night in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He used to spend standing in Qiyam, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he loved. There is a prohibition you should not stand the full night, but that's all the nights, every night of the year. Otherwise, the last ten nights, you can pray for the most of the night, or even for the full night, it's permissible. Further, it's mentioned that he used to wake up his family. That means he was to see to it that even his wives woke up and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking Laylatul Qadr. That's an important point to be noted. And furthermore, he used to put more effort. He used to pray more. He used to do more dua, do more dhikr, trying to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the last ten nights. Okay. Doctor, another point which is important regarding women in acts of ibadah during uh, seeking Laylatul Qadr. Now, if a woman's on her menses, her period, she's not able to fast or to pray. How would she observe Laylatul Tal Qadr? As far as menstruating women are concerned, they can do all acts of worship, all acts of ibadah during menstruation except praying, fasting, circumambulating around the Kaaba and doing etikaf. Except for these four acts of worship, a woman can do all acts of worship while menstruating. The things that a woman can do in the last ten nights if she's menstruating, is that surely she can do dua, she can do supplication. As the Prophet said, it's hadith in Tirmidhi, hadith number 2370, that supplication, dua, is one of the best forms of ibadah. And dua is an ibadah. She can seek for forgiveness by saying, astaghfirullah. I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, which mentioned in Tirmidhi, Hadith number 3512, the Hadith Aisha may be pleased with her, she asked Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if she knew that this was the night of Laylatul Qadr, what should she do? So the Prophet answered that she should pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and say that you are the one who is of forgiving. You love forgiveness, so please forgive me. So asking forgiveness is one of the best things a person can do. The other thing a, a woman can do when she's menstruating during these days, she can do dhikr. For example, she can read Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Allahu Akbar. Which means, glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and Allah is the greatest. She can read Subhanallah, Bihamti, meaning, glory be to Allah, and praise be to Allah. She can read Subhanallah, Wal Azim, that 
Praise be to Allah, Allah is the greatest. So one is doing dhikr. As much as dhikr, they do, it's better for them. And they can also do recitation of the Quran, and they can read the Quran. So all these other acts of worship will get them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during these nights. What exactly is the meaning of belief in Al-Qadr? As far as belief in Qadr is concerned, it is one of the pillars of Iman, that believing in Qadr. And there are four points that are to be noted in the belief of Qadr. Number one, that Allah knows everything. Allah has knowledge of everything, the past, the present, and the future. He has knowledge of things which are general as well as specific. He has knowledge from eternity to eternity. So Allah is the one who knows everything. He has ilm gaib Point number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written this in the law him hafuz, in a tablet preserved. And both these points of belief of Qadr is mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 70, that knowest not thou that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything in the heavens and the earth. And indeed it is kept in his record. And for Allah it is easy. That means, number one, that Allah knows everything. And number two, it's kept in his record. It's mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 70. It's mentioned in Sayyid Muslim, volume number four, in the book of Qadr, hadith number 6416, that the Messenger of Allah said, that Allah ordained the measure of the creation of the universe 50,000 years before the heavens and the earth were created. It's further mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 3, hadith number 4683, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first created the pen and said to it, write. The pen replied, O Lord, what should I write? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote the decree, the qadr of all the things till the beginning of the hour till the beginning of the day of judgment. These are the first two points. The third point of Qadr is that everything happens with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Qasas, chapter number 28, verse number 68, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates and chooses as he wills. It's mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 27, that Allah does whatever he wills. And it's also mentioned in Surah Buruj, chapter number 85, verse number 16. Allah is the doer of all he intends. So here we come to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he intends, he can do. Whatever he wants, he can do. And further, it's mentioned in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 6, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shapes you in the womb as he pleases. It's mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 90. That if Allah willed, He would have given power to them and they would have fought you. It's mentioned in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 112. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if Allah willed, they would not have done it. The fourth point in the belief of Qadr is that all things that happen are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the essence, in the attribute, and in the movement. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Sumur, chapter number 39, verse number 62, that Allah is the creator of everything and he is the guardian and disposer of all affairs. It's further mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 2, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in due proportion. It's mentioned in Surah Safat, chapter number 37, verse number 96, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and your handiwork. And further, just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has created everything that happens, that does not mean that it interferes with the free will. We yet have our free will, and there are many verses in the Quran and Hadith who talk about that, that we have our free will, and the Sharia says that, and we know in our day-to-day -day life that we have a free will. Allah further says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 223, talking about approaching the spouses, that you can approach your tilt the way you like and when you like it. That means you have a free will. It's further mentioned in Surah Taghabun, chapter number 64, verse number 16, that fear Allah as much as you can. Listen to him and obey him. And it's mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 286, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lay a burden greater than a person can bear. And he earns every good that he does. And he suffers every evil that he earns. So based on this, every human being has a free will. And we see that in a day-to-day -day life. For example, there are certain things which are governed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has fixed certain things about death, about life. Everything else, Allah has given a free will. If I want, I can lift my hand. If I want, I can bring it down. If I want, I can walk. If I want, I can sit. It's my will. But certain things, for example, the heart beating. It beats according to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't, if I want to stop my heart from beating, I cannot do it. For example, if I feel cold, I shiver. If I want to, I cannot stop it. It is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has given a free will to the human beings. That's the reason if a person does something evil or does a sin, he is responsible for it. And Allah has given the guidance in the Quran, what is good and what is bad. Jazakallah khair. Once again, Dr. Zakia, we have come to the end of this show. Alhamdulillah, derived great benefit myself. I'm sure, again, the viewers once again have. Likewise, inshallah. And I pray that you, I, and they will benefit more these wonderful answers you've given today. Jazakallah khair. So, brothers and sisters, I trust that you have benefited from the topic tonight. And I urge you to join us tomorrow when we will be discussing the topic etikaf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.